Welcome to the office of Dr. Richard Levine and babiesbylevine.com. Dr. Richard Levine is America's first tubal microsurgeon and has been featured on Good Morning America, The Phil Donahue Show, People Magazine, ABC, CBS, and NBC nightly news programs, as well as other media from around the world. Patients travel from all over the United States and from every corner of the globe to seek his expertise. Dr. Levine offers one of the highest success rates for tubal ligation reversals at an affordable price. Join us to find out why so many women refer Dr. Levine to family and friends, and how he can help you achieve your dream of having a baby. It is very important to time in, of course, correctly. There's only a one or two day window of time that you can get pregnant during the month. Many people think that you can get pregnant any time during the cycle, but that is not correct. So let's talk about a menstrual cycle and how we define it. The first day of your menstrual cycle is the first day of full flow. Not the day that you spot a little bit or a little bit more, but the day you truly flow. We call that cycle day one. So the menstrual cycle includes all of the days of flow and all of the days that you do not bleed until the next bleed. The next bleed is cycle day one of the next period. Most women have, on average, a 28-day cycle, but every woman has some variation in the length of her cycle. Let us use the example that I use in your post-operative instruction book. That lady has a cycle of 28 to 32 days in length. When does she ovulate? Well, she ovulates 14 days prior to the next period. That is not to say 14 days from the day she first bleeds, but 14 days prior to the next period. Well, there's really no way to know when that is. So you have to do the math work and do it based on the shortest cycle and the longest cycle. So this lady says to me, I have a 28-day cycle and the longest cycle is 32 days. Well, 32 minus 14 is 18. So that's when she would have ovulated on that cycle. On her short cycle, 28 days minus 14 is 14. So she would have ovulated on cycle day 14. So this lady is going to ovulate someplace between cycle day 14 and cycle day 18. Let's talk for a moment about intercourse and how often you should have intercourse. A lot of people want to have intercourse every day and they think that if they have sex every day, then they're going to get pregnant more quickly. That is the farthest thing from the truth, quite honestly. Intercourse should not take place more frequently than every other day. For people that have sex more frequently than that, the effect of sperm count goes down. It's sort of like driving from Louisville to California on one tank of gas. You might get to St. Louis, but you're not going to get to California. The same thing with intercourse. If you have too much intercourse, you're likely to run out of an effective sperm count before you get to the goal of ovulation. If you're going to use the formula of every other day, you want to start the day prior to the earliest ovulation that we talked about and have intercourse every other day. If your partner has a relatively low sperm count, then it's probably important to actually avoid sex for four or five days prior to that time to save up the sperm and to maximize what's going on. If we're talking about using an ovulation predictor kit, on the other hand, we'll use a different method than having sex every other day. If you have your LH surge on day 14, cycle day 14, you should have intercourse once that day and once the very next day. And the sperm will last that long. You can have intercourse the third day. For good measure, you may do that as well.